Hey guys, hope you're all doing very well. Today we're going to do an update on Bitcoin. I think it's a pretty timely one. We've got potentially a very, very volatile week ahead for reasons I'll mention in a moment. But also from a TA point of view, things are setting up really, really nicely. So just a little recap from what we've been saying in previous videos. We've been talking about us being still firmly within a bear market and en route to 13.5k. That is the initial target. I did a previous video where I mentioned that in a lot of detail, reasons for that target, and I'll link it at the end. But that is not necessarily the bottom, but certainly the near side target, in my opinion. And until we meet in validation, which we'll recap again on in this video, then my bearish bias is maintained. So let's today we're really just going to zoom in on this lower time frame price action. So if we zoom in, let's go in on the let's go on the four hourly. Okay. So on the four hourly, I think in the last video that we did, which was almost two weeks ago, I think we we're around here, we spoke about how there was room for another move up to the upside before we continued down. And that's essentially what we've seen. Okay, I said I wasn't too happy with us not having hit this upper median line of this shift pitchfork, as you can see here. So it fell just short. Now we've hit it firmly and we've got our rejection to the downside. OK, so that's one bit of resistance that we've got. So we've got this corrective bit of price action following a WXY. So we've got an initial wave up then we've got a running flat and then we've got the final leg up. So we've got a nice three wavish move to the upside. There's no doubts about this. There's nothing five wavish about it. There's nothing impulsive or directional or motive wave, whatever you want to call it. There is nothing to suggest that this is a new reversal. This is all very much a corrective pattern getting ready for the next leg down until proven otherwise. OK, so as I say, there's nothing to suggest a five wave which moves to the upside. So from a TA point of view, using Elliott Wave, there's no reason to start thinking that this is a bullish reversal. OK, so we've had a three wave move come into um, pitchfork resistance at the upper median line. So other key things that we've been looking out for for resistance are the very, very important high time frame indicator, which is our 200 week simple moving average. Let's just hide everything else but that. So we've got just a 200 week simple moving average. So we can see historically uh, it acted as wonderful support back here, support, support. And now this is the longest time we've ever spent underneath this 200 week simple moving average. So the question is, are we going to um, just consolidate and then shoot above it? Or is it going to act as resistance? So we obviously came beneath it, spent how many weeks beneath? One, two, three, four, five, six. This is the seventh week now beneath it, almost two months of price action beneath this 200 week simple moving average. You can see there was, a, I said to on Twitter, you know, it was very key to look out for where we got the weekly close uh, with this week that's just closed. I wanted to see how it closed in relation to the 200 week simple moving average because there was a good shoot up above it up to around 24.3k. But ultimately, where, did, where was the weekly close in, rela in relation to the 200 week simple moving average? It finished beneath it and now we're getting rejected. OK, so that was a really, really key piece of information. And for me, it spells further weakness within the market. OK, so I just wanted to throw that out there with the 200 week simple moving average. And the other very important indicators are Camarilla pivots. So these have been historically really, really important. So just a little recap that I like to do every now and then on Camarilla pivots, which are a big part of my analysis uh, on top of Elliott Wave and Pitchforks. So if you can look back all the way over the last four years or so, so we can see here 2018, wonderful support of the weekly uh, Camarilla Pivot S4. Subsequent year 2019, just hovering between the R4 and R3. Subsequent year R3 and S3. Uh, so these are always the key levels, the R4 and the R3 and the S3 and the S4. So basically what we had in this year of 2021, we finished above the um, the R4, which is a bullish sign. So naturally you would look for support off of the S3 or S4 in the subsequent year. We had that support. It was only a corrective bounce showing there was further weakness. You can see it's coming all the way back down. And I wanted to see, would we find support at the S4 or would we go beneath? OK, and we actually powered through it. It was a really concerning sign. And that's where I felt that this market was heading, had a lot more downside. However, naturally, you had a retest of this S4, which we've just recently seen. So this S4, it comes in at this 24. Sorry, this actually comes in at around 20, 23 and a half K roughly. 
So you can see that's essentially where we've come back up to and then got rejected. A similar picture is seen when we go on the daily Camarilla pivots also. So again, just showing you the value of these Camarilla pivots. Just see how we came in all the way to the R3 and got rejected, okay? So just throwing that out with the Camarilla pivots, just taking that off now and bringing on the rest of the analysis. So the other key things that I look out for, not just on one chart, so I won't just look out for Elliott Wave, Pitchforks, uh, Camarilla pivots, but I'll look at correlating charts. So very importantly, we could take a look at the NASDAQ. So I always like to look at the stock markets. I consider them a general idea of investor sentiment. And I'm seeing ongoing weakness here. So I'm following this downward pitchfork here. And you can see it's this upper warning line. For me, a clean break above this upper warning line that was holding this downward trend. We're on the daily time frame, by the way. A clear break above that would have indicated that the bulls are taking back control. And I must say, we got really close. We, we spent um, maybe a day or two above the upper warning line, as you can see just here. Okay. But looking back, you can see the trend that has been demarcated from these pivots here. Following this original pitch, what's the downside? It allowed, it allowed for the price action to slip above previously. So it shows that the trend actually incorporates a slight deviation above the upper warning line. And so we're still very much within that trend parameter, okay, as we poked above the upper warning line slightly once more. On top of that, we can home in on this smaller pitch rock, which again, similar to what we saw on Bitcoin, we've had that three wave move up into our upper median line, okay? So just trying to demonstrate several examples with pitch rocks and just to show you how powerful pitch rocks really are. Um, so another example on Ethereum, another benchmark asset for crypto. So here you can see the pitch rock we're following to the downside. Again, daily time frame, log scale. Always got to make sure you're on the log scale um, when you're comparing these different charts. So first, second, third pivots came into the 0 0.5 line of this original pitch rock. And again, the pitch rock to the upside you can see here, We've hit the upper warning line several times and it's acted as resistance again and again. Now we've lost the upper median line also. So again, more sign of weakness here on Ethereum. So very clear three wavish move up, just like we saw on Bitcoin. And then there's a few other altcoins. If we look at Matic, a really fine example here. Um, so the pitch rock to the downside, as you can see, we've just rebounded from the lower warning line all the way up to the upper warning line and i know there would have been a lot of excitement it was a pretty strong move to the upside but ultimately the bear trend parameters are intact and this is the value of pitchforks can you see here that if you were to just use a trend line you know take your trend line and you just connect the highs simply okay i suppose there is a bit of a trend line there also but what i was trying to demonstrate is that often you will break a trend line but you won't break a pitchfork and the pitchfork explains why you get that kind of reversal despite having broken a trend line. Okay, so this is an example here on Matic and another example on SHIB. So SHIB again was one that was actually setting up quite nicely. I liked the long setup. There was this long drawn out consolidation which we hit the middle of right down here. We had a nice WXY where we had Y being, I think, equal in terms of price to W here on the log scale. And um, you know, it was a one-to-one -one relationship. And, and yeah, we had that kind of uh, inverse head and shoulders set up. But until it broke this down sloping upper warning line, I maintain that this is still within a bear market. So this was our invalidation. Okay. So, and another fine example on Tilray. So this is re representing weed stocks now. You can see how we had historically a really nice downward pitchfork and it held as resistance all this while here the upper warning line and then when it broke this is what we got huge breakout now you can see the pitch rock is still being held to the downside again we came very close so all markets really testing these upper warning lines so I, there was no doubt there was going to be a lot of bullish sentiment at least briefly but you can see the move up there's nothing bullish about it all very corrective overlapping waves three wavish moves to the upside and getting rejected now once more OK, so it's a common theme across the majority of charts. Now, just coming back to Bitcoin. So I've mentioned the invalidation point on the Nasdaq breaking above the upper warning line on Bitcoin. It was getting back above 24K, which was based on those Camarilla pivot levels. That's that's where the Camarilla pivots really came into their importance. So we've looked at correlating markets using our fundamentals, you know, looking at the Nasdaq 
how the stock market is doing, how invest investor sentiment is doing. And then we've looked at crypto using key TA analysis, Elliott Wave pitchforks, Camera pivots, incorporating time, price, all the important bits of information from each chart. OK, so as I say, probability wise, the way I'm seeing this right now is that we have probably completed this correction. Another reason that we have probably completed this correction is because we've got a lot of volatility coming in this week you've always got to consider the the economic catalyst that could play a role okay there is no doubt correlation between bitcoin and nasdaq and as you can see nasdaq as i mentioned it's completed this three way which move up into the upper median line and what is happening this week tomorrow uh, we've got the fed meeting and we've also this week got a huge number of important blue chip companies revealing their earnings okay so it's a massive massive week we all know the economy is looking weak from a gdp point of view um, but stock markets can obviously sometimes still deviate from that but it's now starting to demonstrate that we're probably going to see further downside on stocks another demonstration of that is looking at the 200 week simple moving average here on stocks so just taking all the annotations off so our black line again is the 200 week simple moving average so following our financial crisis back here in 2008 we have then rallied and since we've come back above the 200 week simple moving average we used it as a support this black line here and then we only once have we tested it now as i say we're just consolidating above it if this now plows beneath it that's game over for the stock market in my opinion that is where you'll get all the headlines saying you know this market is starting to tumble because so far I'd say although it's it's dropped I think at least 20 percent it's kind of avoided the headlines I must say um, so I think you'll start seeing those negative headlines once um, you know we come beneath this 200 week simple moving average so it's a big if yeah we're still not got beneath it so we'll see what happens but as I say probability wise it looks like we're coming beneath pretty soon um, so that pretty much wraps up everything that I'm looking out for here on Bitcoin. So as I say, this is looking like one big bear flag to me. Here's a trend. Here's your continuation pattern. Waiting for the next move down. So the target, as previously mentioned, for a good while now is 13.5k. Yes, we could certainly come down lower than that, but I'm expecting a potential bounce off of that level, at which point, obviously, any short positions I'd want to take profit on, okay? Alternatively, yes, there is the possibility we could power through it, but for the way I play it, I like to play it safe. If it does do that, I'd wait for it to move through, wait for a corrective retest to this level, and then look to get back in. Okay, but as I say, there is the potential for a big bounce off of this level, hence why I'd be taking profits. And if you want further details on why that level is a significant level of support, check out my video, which I'll link somewhere just in the in the top corner of this video in a moment. And yeah. Until then, we'll see how things play out. Invalidation, as I say, is getting back above 24K and NASDAQ breaking cleanly above that downslope and upper warning line that we've spoken about. All right, guys, going to wrap it up. Take care.